And good afternoon to everybody. Hope you can see my screen yeah. right now. So I would just like to share some words about our daily business, what we do at Exum Engineering. Before doing so, I would like to introduce really shortly Exum Engineering. Uh, so for the presentation of today, I would like to explain for those of you that are not really familiar with uh, global laser welding, what we do and how we do this. Then one uh, application, one, one example, T-joint welding with filler wire, which is just like a kind of motivation. Why just looking at the wobble and how the wobble is um, moving and how the, the energy is divided on the, on the surface of the material. It is important to keep the um, quality of the, of the joint. And then two approaches, uh, one using a camera and the other one using an infrared camera. So bo both using cameras, but one is a visual camera and the other one is an infrared camera. And then after that, the conclusions. So as I said before, uh, we found that Exum Engineering uh, already since five years, it was a, a, an interesting approach for us because we were dealing before in other companies with uh, integrating sensors and uh, having always some kind of issues and, and, and challenges integrating high-speed sensors with the laser, with the machine. And uh, we said, we, we would like to make it a little bit different. We would like to have a, a solution so that we are dealing with the, these three worlds together. So electronics, we develop our own electronics at Exome Engineering. We develop the embedded software that is running on these electronics and we apply this mainly to laser applications, not only, but basically this is our bigger application scenario. So um, Senso, right now we've been developing, uh, or we came from this uh, initial status, developing uh, control electronics to optics. And right now we're going into a more bigger application area where we are offering completely solutions for laser world. So, um, for those of you that are not really familiar with uh, wobble laser welding, how do this work? Basically, we just move the beam on the surface using mirrors. In many of the cases, we use two mirrors, but it's also one case where we use one mirror to move it in both directions. So we are somehow wobbling. Uh, uh, the, the, the word itself is like going from one side to the other side, um, making different geometries. These geometries in the or usual, they are described as a circle. Circles are the most used wobble technology or most uh, wobble strategy. Uh, but we can also do, of course, ellipses and uh, lemnitz gate and basically infinite geometries. Basically, we define uh, using um, lines, using splines, how the laser is going to move. And at the end, we have uh, a wobble strategy. How does do this look like on the surface? This is an example of a conduction welding uh, application using uh, aluminum. Uh, basically, what we do here is an ellipse. Uh, the frequency is higher than two, 200 hertz. And um, what we try to do is to move really fast so that we are reducing um, the, the dynamic at the same point. So we're just moving and moving and moving around this area so that at the end for us, it's important to define the wobble type, uh, what we're go going to use, sorry, for the technology, for the application, sorry. Um, but not only the wobble type, it is also important to keep an eye on the frequency, uh, how fast we are repeating this movement on the surface. And of course, also one interesting approach that we're following, uh, the energy, which is let's, uh, at the end, the, the power over the time that we keep, stay at the same point. So it is not only possible to change the figure, how we are wobbling, but we can change as well the different speeds and powers at different segments over this, um, uh, this figure. So as I said before, I brought today just uh, uh, an, explica uh, an application um, case uh, just as a motivation, basically, if you are familiar with laser welding uh, or with welding T-joints, you have a really good definition of the deep penetration throat, how deep you need to go into the material, but also the nominal throat thickness. This is just an example. I just put, put some numbers uh, on the picture so that we have 
uh, an example uh, of how we define or how our customers are, are defining this. This is a work that we've been doing with the company Alpha Laser together. And uh, basically, if we go to uh, an application where we don't use a wobble, let's say, yeah, we will, we're going to try to weld this application, to weld uh, these uh, two metal sheets, uh, this is an inox material, then of course, if we have the right amount of energy, if we have the right amount of laser power, if we have exactly the, the diameter, the focal length and so on, uh, we're going to go deep enough, but we're not going to have exactly this uh, throw geometry that our customers are asking about. So this is just an example how, let's say, uh, wobbling could be an enabler also for future applications in structural welding. Um, before we start doing this, we, of course, analyze uh, using cameras. Uh, this is just a video of how we using uh, a wobble strategy. This is a lemnis K, the most typical uh, uh, strategy in those cases. We just wobble. Uh, once we wobble, we go further steps and we analyze how deep, how, which kind of laser power do we need, uh, the width and so on, and how we cannot affect the surrounding areas of the T-joint, so that at the end, we're able to have, let's say, an acceptable um, deep penetration, an acceptable throw geometry, and also uh, an acceptable uh, distance over the surface. So uh, let's think about, of course, this is going to variate in the, depending on which angle are we welding. This is a, a welding um, strategy done with a robotic arm. So it is also important to have access. But basically what we see here is uh, uh, a well-defined uh, laser uh, well joint so that we, we can say, okay, this is working well, but um, it is important to understand that the stability of this, um, of this result is depending, as I said before, not only in the frequency, but also that we keep this wobble strategy um, uh, along the path and that we keep also the position related to the filler wire uh, at the exactly position that we had at the beginning. So also related to the to the presentation before, um, this position, uh, how, how deep and, and the effective focal length uh, is here, let's say, ex if we extrapolate to the X and Y position of the laser beam, uh, it is important as well to keep this uh, position. So, um, in our laboratory setup, we have uh, integrated two cameras. Uh, as I said before, basically we use uh, in this uh, setup two uh, mirrors. So we use a, a galbo scanning mirror or two galbo scanning mirrors so that we are using, uh, we're integrating a thermal camera uh, in the upper part. So when we have the reflection of the energy, let's say the thermal image is going back to the camera so we are seeing on axis, we share the same uh, path of the laser beam and of the thermal camera, and we do it as well for the visual camera. So we can see every time um, and all the time how the, the, um, the beam is affecting how the weld uh, is working and how we are melting the surface. One of the challenges that we have uh, um, have had before during this uh, integration, of course, is uh, how the cameras are centered, how the different wavelengths, how the different lenses and, and so on are giving us an image that is really okay for doing this, this analysis. So basically, uh, it's not only important to have a possibility to process all this information, but the optical setup is re really important and uh, um, is a decisive uh, for, for having a good uh, monitoring solution. So um, this work, this is another work. Uh, we did it also in a project together with the Research Institute Lortec, uh, in which we said we would like to be able to identify five kinds of wobbles uh, using convolutional neural networks. So usual, using uh, um, deep learning technologies uh, which let's say are state of the art right now. And uh, because we are able to integrate cameras, we would like just to identify how these different um, 
wobbles are performing on the surface. So we define five of them, a small circle with a diameter of 0 0.5 millimeter, a bigger circle of, but with a diameter, diameter of one millimeter, uh, an ellipse in one direction and the same, but just 90 degrees to the direction of, uh, of the uh, machine speed. And then of course, uh, the well-known Lemniscate gate or infinite uh, strategy. So um, in this case, it, it is important also to understand that we're not using exactly the same amount of power for all of them, but we are using exactly the same fit rate and we're trying to keep as well the frequency for all of them. So I would like to share some of them, some of the results. Uh, so the monitoring approach in this case was uh, done using uh, YOLO UV8. Uh, so we did the, we, we took the images, we identified the images, uh, we labeled the images. Uh, at the end were more than thousand images. And then uh, we just tried to, to understand if the system is going to be able to identify, of course, with the same, with the right amount, uh, sorry, with the right uh, uh, optical set up because we need to uh, have an external illumination and filtering. Um, and in this case, I would like just to share two, two of the cases of uh, aluminum welding with this setup. So on the right side, you see the lemniscate and basically uh, the, the system is performing well. Even if you see at the beginning that the geometry of the lemniscate is not exactly the same as at the end. But on the right side, you see that um, those are some errors that we can find on the edge of the aluminum sheets. Uh, I hope you can see it here at some point. Uh, there was just a, a small amount of extra material. And it is really important to be able to count and to be able to identify um, these deviations because this deviation uh, at the moment that we are welding could represent a, a less welded uh, or a not welded or another deep penetration that we were trying to reach before. So this is an approach how we are uh, being able using cameras, using visual cameras, using filtering and using uh, external illumination to identify and to count how the uh, welding and how the wobble is performing at every moment. At this, in this case, we're using uh, shielding gas argon. So what you see here is basically the tube, which is just putting really uh, uh, in the front of the world, the, the argon shielding gas. So if we go to the to the approach of using infrared cameras, uh, which is a little bit of a little bit different, um, I would say it is a little bit more difficult to understand for uh, the user because we don't have a big um, spatial resolution. We have a big temporal resolution, but basically we have a 128 by 128 pixel system, which is able to measure at 4,000 frames per second. From that point, we need to define a region of interest because we are not processing all the information. In this application, what we did is we just used 25 by 25 pixel. And uh, what you see here is the sequence of what the camera is seeing exactly at every uh, one divided by 4,000 uh, second of the image. So of course, if you see every image, the information of every image is just the beam moving around on the surface. And uh, this is not enough information for us. So if we put uh, a several amount of images, depending on the frequency, how, how fast we're wobbling, uh, in this case, I think it was 13 images, uh, you can probably identify making a stack of images that this could be something similar to a small circle. If I compare it to a bigger circle, Probably, if you're really good, you will say, yes, probably this is a circle. Um, but let's say for a, an user, for a person, it's not really user to identify if this geometry is uh, um, is well um, or is good or not. If I compare it with, a, with an ellipse, uh, it's well going to be the same situation. So making a stack from different images, uh, it's quite complicated. More or less, it is possible to identify that there is something similar, but this is just only because we know what the geometry what the geometry was before, but not really because we are uh, able to identify it just from the from the image. So 
For this, we just uh, try to use three ways of using deep uh, neural networks. In this case, I just present the comparison of the of three results. Basically, um, in these three approaches, we use a convolution convolutional two um, D into the neural network. And uh, the idea here is that uh, we tested with 30, 40 images and um, the actual mobile pattern is just, uh, uh, you, you see in this confusion matrix is on the left side and the predicted mobile pattern is just on the, on the lower side. So if you take into account that we are just making a stack of images so similar to that how humans are understanding how to analyze this, we are not that uh, wrong. Uh, yes, there are some uh, some situations where it could be better, but uh, let's say it, it's performing more or less well. But we said, no, we would like to go even uh, to a, a better result. And in this case, we went to the second approach and to the third approach. In this case, we're using convolutional long short-term memories in 2D. So basically, we're introducing in both of them, not only the spatial resolution, but also the temporal resolution so that the system is just taking into account the image before. So more or less similar to this approach, but in this case, we're making an image from the stack of images. Uh, and in this case, we're taking every picture or every frame as it is coming from the camera. And what you see here, uh, comparing both of them, is that we are performing quite well. Uh, this is something that uh, is possible to do it online. So we are getting the images online from the camera and we are able to identify if the pattern that it should be doing, doing uh, is right or not. Of course, we're going one step forward and we're uh, identifying it, what happens if we are not identifying the shape that we would like to, to or that we have in the list, because at this, at this moment, we are, let's say, out of the, of the stable process. So, this uh, was my presentation, what I wanted to share with you. So uh, I just wanted to present that global laser welding serves as a, a, an enabler for various applications uh, using filler material and also, of course, without using filler material. Um, for us, it's really important to keep the constancy of the wobble beam. So not only thinking about how uh, powerful is the laser and if we are or not in the focal point, but as well, are we doing exactly uh, the, the strategy that we define? And um, as I said before, using cameras, visual cameras, requires a little bit more of extra setup, illuminations, and filtering. But uh, in our eyes, it really represents a solution compared to more complex sensor integrations. Uh, of course, if we can both, if, if we can use both of them, we are seeing in different. Uh, um, wavelengths, which is really positive. And um, for us, the most robust application is using uh, infrared cameras because we have a higher dynamic range and we have a high speed solution uh, up to 4,000 frames per second, which is uh, really positive in our eyes. So with that, thank you very much for your interest and the possibility to present uh, our activities on this area. And uh, yes. If you have any questions, please feel free.